This is going to be the toughest test for the Lions since week one versus the Chiefs. Welcome back to Bray Birds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. So this should be a good game. The Detroit Lions, who are 11 and four and clinched to their vision for the first time since I don't know, man. I was probably playing with Legos and Hot Wheels. That's how long ago it's been since they clinched the division. They're going to Dallas to play the Cowboys, who are 10-5. and five. So both of these teams still have a chance to get that top seed, and that's going to be very important because you will get a first-round bye. Uh, the Cowboys are favored by six, and that is because they're 7-0 and at home. But don't sleep on the Lions because they are 6-2 and two on the road. And unlike the, what was it, the Thursday night football game where we had the last minute Amari Cooper, you know, injury, there are no major injuries on this slate that we really should be concerned with. So we can just jump into my analysis. This is my difference maker video. So for my difference maker, when I'm talking about a difference maker, I'm not talking about the person you should put in your captain spot. I'm going to talk about that person you should put in their, your last flex spot because we are now in week 17. So we have a good idea of the type of player that should go in that last six spot in general as far as you winning one of these cheap PPs. So the first part of this video, I'm going to look at the snap counts because if you're not on the field, you can't catch, run, or throw the ball. And then I'm going to look at the difference makers from each team. And then I'm going to finish up the video by giving you like a peek at two of my thought process lineups. So I know that people are submitting lineups and you know, making edits to their lineups and creating lineups in totally different ways. But it's nothing wrong with seeing with how other people are making their lineups. So first, let's look at the snap count, snap counts for the for the Cowboys and Dak Prescott. He's the quarterback uh, running back. You have Pollard, but a uh, very interesting Dowdle is out. So that's one of the one injuries, but it's not a major injury. So you have Hunter Lipke. He is someone that he's going to be on the field at least 30 percent of the time because we can look and see that Pollard never really is on the field for more than 75 percent of the time. So we'll talk about Lipke later, but he's someone that is very interesting because of the injury to Rico Dowdle. Wide receiver, you have C.D. Lamb. I mean, when it comes to DFS, C.D. Lamb, Tyreek Hill, they're like number one, number two. You all can decide who's number one and who is number two. And then you have Brandon Cooks, who has gotten better as the year has gone on. And then we have Michael Gallup, who a lot of people forgot about. And then I mentioned him as a difference maker. He went out and got a touchdown and helped some people. So we'll talk about that. And then their fourth tight end, sorry, their fourth wide receiver who's on the field a lot is Jalen Tor Tolbert. And you can see that he's been on the field at least 35% of the time in just about every game. And then you have Turpin, who is their punt returner, but who also gets on the field for some jet sweeps and occasional trick plays. At tight end, you definitely have Jake Ferguson. And he's one of the best tight ends in the NFL. And he has really, he has two really good backups in, in Schoonmaker and in Hendershot. So we'll kind of talk about that later. So my first difference maker from the Cowboys, I'm going back to the well and I'm going to Michael Gallup because of situations related to this offense and just, you know, the way it's gone this year. He is down to $3,000. We can see that he's had multiple targets in two out of the last five games and at least one target in every game. And we can see that three weeks ago, he turned that target into a touchdown and that won people a lot of guap. Now, obviously with all of the weapons there is a chance that he'll have you can see a 1.9 you know fantasy point game or a 2.4 point game but this is your last flex spot this is that difference maker so he can also have the game like he had three weeks ago when he won people a lot of money all right next we have Jalen Tobert so we're kind of getting an idea now that in general the difference makers are those third and fourth strength third and fourth string wide receivers and generally the tight ends whether it be the first or second string tight end and we can see that Jalen Tobert he has actually gotten multiple targets in two out of the last five games and he actually has turned to target earlier in the year into a touchdown so a lot of times that press guy he can be really good at going through his progressions and he will you know spread the ball around so at 2400 we just need him to get a couple of targets and maybe a touchdown then all of a sudden we're shooting up the leaderboard 
Next, we have Hunter Lipke. And as we talked, we spoke about Dowdle's going to be out. So even with Dowdle in, we can see the last two games he's had one reception and he had two attempts in those games. But once again, um, Pollard's not going to be on the field 100% of the time. And then this game is crazy. If something happens to Pollard, all of a sudden you have a guy in your lineup that only costs you $800. All right, so let's move to Detroit. And we have Goff. Jared Goff is the quarterback, no doubt. Whew, the running back situation. This is one of the most interesting you know, running back rooms in the NFL. These are two guys that have been starters before and would easily be starters if they were on separate teams. You have Jameer Gibbs, the rookie who is dynamic and amazing, and he gets the ball about 50 to 60% of the time as far as being on the field. There is some overlap. Sometimes they have two, you know, running back sets. But then you have David Montgomery who, I mean, he still looks good. I mean, he still looks quick and he gets a lot of attempts. So I actually like both of them in this game. Obviously, if you go with David Montgomery, there's more risk involved, but that's also lower ownership. Wide receivers. You have Amara St. Brown, who is definitely a top 10 wide receiver in the NFL. He is always on the field unless he's injured or nicked up. Then you have, you know, you have Josh Reynolds and James, Jamison Wilson. Uh, Williams, excuse me. So they're the second and third string wide receivers. But you also have Khalif Raymond, who's been on the field about 30% of the time recently. And that is something very interesting and we'll try to hit on later. And then you have, I mean, you have a top 10, some would say a top five tight end in Sam Laporta. And then Brock Wright is out, which leaves some snaps for James Mitchell. All right, so my first difference maker is Khalif Raymond. So once again, there are a lot of targets. There are a lot of mouths to feed on the Lions. But you can see, despite that, Khalif Raymond has gotten multiple targets in three out of the last five games. And even though he hasn't turned that into a touchdown, he has done it before earlier in the year. And you can also see that they also use Khalif Raymond for jet sweeps because he does have three rushing attempts in the last five games. And then I'm going with James Mitchell. And I know this seems crazy, but if you just look at the history of the winning lineups, especially in the large GPPs, it's always somebody like James Mitchell who is in that lineup. All right, so my first thought process lineup, it is a 3-3 build. I'm pretty sure most of the builds are going to be leaning towards 4-2. However, the Lions have so many difference makers that I think that if you go 5-1 Dallas, you're actually going to be getting kind of contrarian because a lot of people with Jameer Gibbs, with Montgomery, with Golf, with Amara St. Brown, and Laporta, despite the Cowboys being favorites. They're just a lot of weapons on the Lions. So this is a very simple 3-3 build. I have Dak Prescott um, in the captain spot. Uh, his last three games haven't been the best, so you would think a lot of people might pivot away from him a little bit, especially with all of the weapons out there. But we see his ceiling is mid-30s to upper 40s. So if he has one of those games where he gets a rushing touchdown on the goal line and he throws a touchdown to CeeDee Lamb and then throws a little dink pass to a Hunter, then all of a sudden you're zooming up the leaderboard. And then I have Amara St. Brown for the Lions. I also have Mitchell and I have Golf because as we saw on Thursday, Thursday night football when you put someone chalky like Dak Prescott in the captain spot you're gonna have to get real different if you don't want to chop the prize for example I think on Thursday night in the main contest 48 people shared first place and it was actually crazier it could have been even crazier because Earlier in the game, there were a lot of people that had two defenses in, and for a little bit of the time, the two defense lineup was number one, and I think it was being shared by over 200 people. So if you have Dak Prescott or if you have CeeDee Lamb as your captain, uh, just know that the rest of your lineup is going to have to look kind of different, and that's what I tried to do with Hunter and Mitchell. All right, so this I think will be very contrarian. Not a lot of people, and I understand why, think that the Lions are going to come into Dallas, 7-0 at home, Dallas, and kick butt. But if you can find a lineup like a 5-1 you know, Detroit lineup or a 4-2 Detroit lineup, that makes sense. I promise you, you're not going to be chopping with 48 to 200 people. So in this lineup, I actually fade 
C.D. Lamb. So that alone is going to make you different. And I fade Amaran St. Brown. So I have Gibbs. This is one of those nights where Gibbs just dominates. He gets a, he gets a little short pass at the goal line in the red zone. And he you know, gets a touchdown or two. And then I have Bagley getting a couple of field goals. And then the Lions defense either getting some kind of punt return or a fumble recovery. I have Dak Prescott in there because you got to have one line. And then I have Laporta. So this lineup is very contrarian but it's not insane so when you have these kind of lineups you got to have to know that you're kind of going it's kind of like in baseball where in the ninth inning you can actually go for the single or the home run so a lot of people will go for the single some people will go for the home run so when you have this lineup know that you're going for the home run lineup